Hi friends, today I am starting this subject hydraulics and pneumatics which is prescribed for the fourth semester of mechanical engineering course. As the name suggests, it consists of two parts that is one is hydraulics and the other one is pneumatics. Now the first unit in this subject is introduction to hydraulics. So we will study that. Now this hydraulics is also called as it is also called as fluid mechanics. It can also be called as fluid mechanics and missionaries because it deals with study of fluids. Study of fluids. Now let us see what is a fluid first. What is a fluid? What do you mean by fluid? A fluid is defined as a state of substance which is having two properties. One, it is incompressible. It is incompressible. And two, it doesn't offer, does not offer resistance to flow. No resistance is offered to flow. So any state, a, a state of substance which has these two qualities is known as a fluid, is defined as a fluid. Incompressible means its volume, it occupies a definite volume which cannot be reduced and it does not offer any resistance to flow, that is it flows freely. Now, such a fluid is called, if we, a fluid which agrees with this definition exactly is called as an ideal fluid. But in practice, we will not get any fluid, any substance which obeys these two conditions, that is, which is incompressible and it doesn't offer any resistance. See, liquid is also a state of substance. This liquid what happens in the case of a liquid is it is slightly compressible, very very slightly compressible and it offers very little resistance, it offers very little resistance to flow. So in this subject we consider all liquids to be fluids though they are slightly compressible and they offer a little resistance to flow because we don't get an ideal fluid, these, these are called as the real fluids. And the most commonly occurring liquid in this, on this earth is water. So, it is generally, this is the substance which we will be dealing in this uh, subject called hydraulics. Hydra means water. So, it is the study of water predominantly. Hence, this subject is also called as hydraulics. Now, what are the properties of liquids? Already, you have studied the properties of liquids in science. In physics, we have studied the properties of solids, liquids and gases. Right, three states of substances. So, we have studied them. Now, once again, recalling them, these are the properties. We have the very important properties of liquids or fluids is density specific gravity specific gravity specific weight pressure capillarity surface tension viscosity etc etc these are the properties which already you have studied in physics now of this from mathematical point of view these four properties are of utmost importance to us. These first four properties are very, very important 
and you should know exactly what they stand for now first let us take let us see what is density density is defined as the <coughs> mass per unit volume density is defined as density of a substance is defined as a fluid or a liquid is defined as mass per unit volume and mathematically it is the ratio of mass to volume generally it is represented in grams per cc this mass is in grams volume is in cc or cubic centimeters cubic centimeter means if i have a tank measuring 1 cm by 1 cm by 1 cm a cubical tank this is 1 cm this is 1 cm and that is 1 cm if i take a liquid in that then its volume is called 1 cubic cm 1 into 1 into 1 is 1 cubic cm so what is the mass of 1 cubic cm of a liquid that is known as density of that liquid now density of two liquids is important to us one is density of water density of water is 1 gram per cc 1 gram that is if you take 1 cc of water its mass is 1 gram this is called as the standard liquid water is known as the standard liquid then you should know density of mercury which is chemically its chemical symbol is hg so density of mercury is 13.6 grams per cc that is if you take 1 cubic centimeter of mercury its mass is 13.6 grams it is the why we should know this is this is the heaviest known liquid the heaviest known liquid its weight is 13.6 times that of water for same volume right so this is the heaviest liquid the only metal in liquid can liquid state at ordinary room temperature so this is these two liquids we are supposed to remember always the density of these two liquids that is water and mercury next second property important property is specific gravity specific gravity now this specific gravity of a liquid or fluid is a comparative property it's a comparative property it is defined as the specific gravity of any liquid is density of that liquid density of that liquid of the liquid divided by density of standard liquid that is density of water density of water here there is no unit for this specific gravity there is no unit because both are densities this will also be in grams per cc this will also be in grams per cc they cancel and it will have it's a number specific gravity is a number which doesn't have any unit whereas density has grams per cc as the unit now from you can make out specific gravity of water specific gravity of water will be 1 grams per cc divided by again 1 gram per cc so gram per cc gram per cc cancel and it is 1 specific gravity of mercury mercury will be 13.6 because its density of mercury is 13.6 grams per cc and density of water denominator is constant 1 gram per cc so it is 13.6 so the difference between density and specific gravity is when we give it as density we give it with unit and when we give it as specific gravity it will no unit will be there it will be number numerically the value of density of any liquid and the specific gravity of that liquid will be same numerically only difference being that there the uh, density uh, this unit is given here then uh, the unit is not given that's the difference now this this number indicates whether 
the liquid is heavier than water heavier than water or lighter than water if the number is greater than 1 then it is heavier than water if it is less than 1 for example in the case of petrol we say the specific gravity is 0.8 0.84 0.82 something like that so this number is less than that of water so if this number specific gravity is less than 1 we can take it that this is lighter than water so when you put liquid some kerosene or petrol or diesel into water the that liquid will float over water if you pour mercury into water mercury sinks water floats over mercury because mercury is heavier than water that is the indication given by the specific gravity next the third property i mark there is specific weight specific weight of a liquid is defined as weight of the liquid per unit volume specific weight this is the third one specific weight it is its symbol is w in hydraulics wherever we get w it stands for specific weight and it is defined as weight per unit volume weight divided by volume weight of the liquid divided by volume of the liquid it is generally given in kilo newton per cubic meter kilo newton per cubic meter this is the unit of specific weight it is denoted by w it is defined as the weight per unit volume mathematically it is the ratio of weight to volume and its unit is kilo newton per cubic meter now mathematically it is equal to specific gravity of the liquid if you want specific specific weight of any liquid it will be specific gravity of liquid into multiplied by 9.81 so many kilo newton per cubic meter so specific weight of water specific weight of water will be 1 into 9.81 that is 9.81 only 9.81 kilo newton per cubic meter if you want specific weight of mercury then it will be 13.6 into 9.81 whatever it is so many kilo newton per cubic meter now generally most uh, in most of the problems we get water so you must remember that the specific weight of water is always 9.81 kilo newton per cubic meter if it is any other liquid other than water they will give us the specific gravity of that liquid then specific gravity of the liquid multiplied by 9.81 gives its weight specific weight right next the fourth property important property which we have to consider is pressure pressure now pressure is defined as pressure is defined as force per unit area force per unit area force per unit area so this will be its unit will be kilo newton per square meter how much a liquid or a fluid exerts pressure on one square meter area that is called as its pressure now again in this pressure we already discussed this i have already told you in basic thermodynamic basic thermal engineering that in pressure we have got different types gauge pressure absolute pressure and uh, atmospheric pressure and i gave the relationship between absolute pressure and uh, gauge pressure the same relationship holds good here also whenever we say pressure it is the absolute pressure absolute pressure is the pressure measured from real zero that is that is uh, the sum of gauge pressure and atmospheric pressure this is called as the total of these two is called as the absolute pressure whenever we say pressure 
it is the absolute pressure which is to be given and its unit is kilo si unit is kilo newton per square meter you have to remember this now pressure can also be given as head pressure can also be given as head pressure head it is called pressure head it is denoted by h what is this pressure head now i'll give you a small example suppose we have a pipe in which some liquid say water is flowing through the pipe now if i make a hole here the hole is made or if the pipe gets punctured what happens is there will be a jet of water coming out like this now the height to which it reaches the height to which it reaches depends upon depends upon the pressure here higher is the pressure higher is the head higher is the height traveled by this jet of water lower is the pressure lower is the this pressure so this is called this distance is called the pressure head it depends upon the pressure at which the water is flowing here the pressure of water and mathematically pressure can be converted pressure is denoted by p pressure head is denoted by h and these two are related pressure head is related to pressure like this is equal to p by w so many meters it is generally given in meters right now this relationship connects three quantities one is the pressure head and the other one is this second one is pressure and the third one is specific weight of the liquid which is flowing through that pipe now or the liquid under consideration and this is the relationship which connects these three quantities and if you know any two of them we can get the third one so from this equation we can con we can get the pressure head if we know the pressure or pressure can be got if we know the pressure head if h is known we can get p if p is known we can get h we can convert pressure and pressure head into one another using this relationship so this is these are the fundamentals then we have this capillarity they are those properties viscosity they are not that important in calculations we don't get them so i am leaving at that and this is the introduction to the study of hydraulics